Flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Antares moon. I'm the Archangel Uriel. And I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And we're going to talk about the original house system. Now, check this out. I already got a video about this, but this is just an update. Because the soul group has grown since then. So, there's a lot of people that's not privy to that information. So, right now, I'm going to do an update on that. So, we're talking about the original house system. Now, what is the original house system? Now, we need to know everybody has a 360. And your 360 is just you outlining your space, your circle. Now, before you outline your space, your circle... It's just space. It's just your state of being. It's not a state of awareness yet. Once you start to outline it, that becomes your halo. The lights that you're creating around yourself and the spaceships that you're creating to jump into, that becomes the state of awarenesses. That's what a halo actually is. So based upon a person's halo, you can see the kind of ideas that they have on their head. You see what I'm saying? Now, based upon you creating a temple, a house, a headship, that's what you're actually doing within your relative space. As just you being a spirit. No shape and no form. So, for the most part, here's the thing. When we talk about the original house system, you as a spirit traveling in your space, you're trying to make out your circle. And you're trying to create the outlining of that circle. You're trying to create the awareness of the parameter. Because you're just your space, just your perimeter. But once you start to outline it and shit like that, here's where we get into the concept of this video right here. Which is the original house system. Because this is, what the, this is the state of being that you are in subconsciously. And this is what you are manifesting in your life subconsciously. And it's forced to deal with externally with your masculine energies. A.K.A. where your original placements are at right now. Not the original house system. But look, your houses that you got right now now and where the planets is at these are the second comings this is when you already have manifested a spaceship to be in now those spaceships got manifested those states of awarenesses got manifested out of your state of being which you was resonating with and that's taking us to the subconscious realm so you know this is beyond vedic and eastern and this is beyond anybody trying to tell you this is some uh this is the actual original astrology because before we was even calculating and understanding each specific planet and, and the influences and things of that nature, we was just going towards the moon and the sun. And first we was doing it towards the moon. This is why way back then, like 2,000 years ago, uh, you was like, damn, they was living to 100 and something years old or 300. No, they was correlating their days based upon different stars. So when we start talking about we started off with the moon, the moon travel is a lot more short, is, is a lot shorter than the sun travel. So if if you say, for an example, this is what I'll be talking about religious people when it's no purpose of you trying to know the time of the day or know your birthday and still be a Christian. That don't make no sense because this is what I mean by that, right? For the most part, when we talk about the time of the day and, and where the actual sun is at, you know how old you is based upon a full sun rotation. So the day you was born, wherever the sun was at, that's your starting point. And when it do a full rotation, that's when you call yourself, you grow an age. You know what I'm saying? So that's what age technically is. Don't let a religious person try to make you think otherwise. But for the most part, and then it goes to a, a, a macro level of a astrological age we start to go through and experience. And this is where a new age comes from and things of that nature. Don't get lost into a religious aspect of it. But you need to know that uh, once we start to talk about um, the, the, the sun and we was just correlating where the moon was at. The, the space that the moon was at is where we was calculating, and once we once the moon do a full rotation, which was nine months, that's what we was calling uh, a year old for us and things of that nature. And then we start to move on when we had the day of our Lord, a.k.a. the descendant that was coming from the uh, the relations of the stars of Aldebaran and, and um, the, the group of stars of Osiris, I mean, not Osiris, but um, the Orion's Belt, um, and then you get to... Um, series and things of that nature the relationships that they was having is what flung and created the orb that that have manifested into a big body of water that we see today that have descended because it got heavy enough to come down within this realm of reality that we see that's close to this chakra that y'all call the sun right now so once we started uh to correlate the day of our lord uh that's when we started to map out um our new age aka started to calculate after 12 months after when that's when that do a full rotation not just the moon now, here's the thing. Whatever space that was in, that was the energy that we was calling the first house for whoever's born. So even though the sun had a first house itself, so this was spark off spring, the first house, and then you got the middle of spring, second house, and then you got the last of spring, the transformation, which is the third house. But for the most part, we know when there's spring or when things is getting ready to start to be reborn again and birth, we, we, we looked at that as the sun being in the first house or the Christ being in the first house or the year of our Lord. You see what I'm saying? Now, 
funny because it brought back uh, seasons of transformation and things of that nature, which is nothing but death and birth, right? Now, for the most part, whatever space that was in, now whoever was born, the, we all knew that we all know that we're all stars. So, whatever space that you're born in, right? Based upon us understanding the sun travel and what house that is in, aka particularly what part of the year that we are experiencing before we created clocks and shit like that. So we still had to understand farming and season and, and seasons and shit like that. So for the most part, based upon the sun being in a specific house, if you was born during that period of time, then that becomes your first house. So even though the this got a clock of his own, when you are born, you got a clock of your own. So let's say you was born when the man. I always forget to delete the last videos, but yeah, like I was saying, even though this has a clock of its own, you have your own clock that we have to start it from. So wherever you was born and the sun was at, that becomes your first awareness. But here's the thing: it's not all about just knowing the uh, the the yearly travel of the sun because it gets a little deeper. Here's where you have to know how the houses move, and for the most part, <clears throat> you have a lot of people in today that don't even understand. Why the house is calculated like that. Like a lot of astrologers and even Vedic and Eastern astrologers, they just learn something and run with it, but don't understand why it's like that in the first place. So going back, like I was telling y'all, at a very primitive stage of humanity, we was kind of correlating all of our lives to the moon travel first. So based upon the moon travel, we know the moon moves a, a, a degree every two hours. So for the most part, this is how we was basing the house systems. We ain't understand how constellations and things of that nature was correlating yet. So we was, dump, we was jumping into our influence and how we was understanding spirituality. So for the most part, this is how we even came up with the concept of spirituality in the first place keep that in mind understanding the influences of shapes and forms and the entity that could be in that deity that's outside of us aka entities that take more responsibility than the entities that's in deities that's in smaller versions you see what i'm saying so my, micro macro however the fuck you want to call it large big alpha omega uh the beginning the end which first shall be last which last shall be first so, based upon us correlating the moon travel first, this is how we started to uh, point out the houses as far as on a day-to-day -day schedule. So, since the moon moves a degree every two hours, then that's how we were starting to correlate the houses. Because if we can see we have in spring, uh, if we see we have in spring, uh, summer, winter, fall... And that, that ain't really but one day in the esoteric realm to the celestial body. So we live within a being that stay in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional wise. This is a small, large thing, not a level thing like you're going up and down. So for the most part, living within this being, they level, they experience more level of life. So same way your bacteria and shit like that, uh, 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 like almost 90 years to them, to you probably is like one day or a couple days or something like that. But I mean, I could correlate that, but I'm just trying to give you an example. So when we talk about spring, uh, summer... Uh, fall, winter, this is us calculating one day in the esoteric realm. So one year to us is one day in the esoteric realm. So it would be the same way for your blood cells to you. You know what I'm saying? A whole year to, uh, 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 a whole year to your blood cells is, a, is just one day to you. So for the most part, we start to understand, we already understand spirituality and we live within beings and things of that nature. So how we start to correlate the houses and things of that nature is when the moon moves a degree, a house shifts. So for the most part, this is how we started to understand how to calculate throughout the day. How you got morning, evening, midday. I think evening is midday. So you got, you got morning, afternoon, evening, night. So this is our mini version of spring, um, summer, fall, winter, within a, with, with you being a spirit in your body, experiencing those transitions. So for the most part, here's the thing. Let's say... Six, before we understood it was six o'clock in the morning, right? We understood that the moon moves a, a degree every two, every two hours. So once we reach that hour where we start to see that the sun is getting ready to follow, but the moon is on its own travel, here's how we understand. This is how we started to pinpoint houses. And this is where the concept of Eastern and Vedic astrologers even, even started to come to the conclusion of the indoctrination of mansions and nashatras and things of that nature. That's where mansions and houses come from. Because when we get a whole full spectrum of a degree, but we got the moon traveling through it, and each transition of the, of the moon uh, becomes a mansion. But it's just a moon traveled. It's just a mother. It's just a reflection of what we're experiencing in the totality of that space. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. So even though a, a full space will be a full house, a mini house is what we call a mansion. Even though down here, everything is in reverse, so a mansion is bigger than a house. But when you go into the esoteric realm and the astrological wise, a mansion is smaller than a house. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind.
And I meant to say a mansion is bigger than a house down here. But in esotergram, everything is in reverse. A mansion is smaller than a house. So a mansion is the moon house within the bigger house. Since the sun is a bigger travel and it takes 12 months uh, to do a full rotation, then the, it, the spectrum of the house is bigger. So what we call a mini house is the moon moving through the light, the rainbow that the sun have already created in the sky, the halo that it created as the state of awareness in the state of being. When the moon travel through each spectrum, each spectrum in it, we call that each a mansion. So that's how we could decipher because if the moon, if we was looking at that first, then we got many houses within the house because if the sun create an expansion of it and the moon has to travel through it because it travels faster because it's closer to the chakra, that's where mansion come from. That's where the chakra come from. That's where understanding degrees come from. Everything get filtered through the sun and moon within this realm of reality. Don't get lost in Vedic and Eastern neither to try to make them think that you have to worship uh, fixed stars and things of that nature because they do not know what they're doing or they're, they're really not scholars themselves you know what I'm saying they really just learned something and think wherever they learned it from is the true knowledge because it's, it came from somebody before they was living other than that how the fuck you think that person got it learning spirituality what, what we doing you see what I'm saying so for the most part here's the thing right um, understanding the houses we understand now I'm, I'm just going to use the time right now right so for the most part let's say we was calculating the moon and the moon moves uh a degree every two hours so we was shifting houses so we understand it was getting ready to become daytime and things of that nature that's how we knew that the sun is getting ready to come the day the day the, the lord is getting ready to come the light is getting ready to come so the moon kind of gave us that shift this is why you can see the moon uh way better when that chakra is not coming yet but the moon always lets you know where which chakra aka where the sun is house is at aka based upon reflection so this is how we was telling time, telling ourselves and things of that nature. So for the most part, from 6 a, from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. will be the first house. So then when the moon, uh, so based upon the moon travel, that's how we correlated the whole first house, knowing that the sun creates that spectrum of a first house. So us to understand what's behind the sun and the other influences and shit like that. Boom. Then from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's the second house. From 3 a.m. I mean, I, I mean, from 10 a.m. From 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's the third house. From tweet from 12 p.m. to uh, 2 p.m. That's the uh, uh, yeah, that's the motherfucking uh, fourth house. From 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's the fifth house. From um, and and this is just calculating with the time. And you go all the way until you get from uh. 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. That's the 12th house. So this before we even had names for these constellations and things of that nature. We just understood them as houses. Now, depending on what part of the day you was born in, that becomes, uh, you will look at that as, this is how we calculate your first house, right? But back in the day, before we was doing all these systems and things of that nature, whatever part of the day you was born in, that's the piece of the solar system you created your mini version solar system at. So that becomes your first house. So for an example, right? Y'all say I'm a Leo Ascendant, right? Well, the, my second comment says I'm a Leo Ascendant. So this means my um, this means that my son, since I'm an Aries, I was born during springtime, right? But here's the thing. Since I was born during springtime... In the first house period of springtime. So that would be like from March 20-something to uh, April 20-something. You know what I'm saying? April 21st or something. Or April 19th. March 20 to April 19th, right? I was born in that period of time. So during that period of time, as far as the main house, not the mansions of the moon that we're following at the time. We were following just the sun and the moon. So boom, that lets us know that we're in the Aries season. Spring and off season. Before we even knew it was Aries. It was just the first house. So that's overall the first house. So based upon us understanding the moon travel. We understand that as far as this clock. From 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning. It, the first house is going to be that star constellation. That we end up calling Aries during that period of time. Well we started to develop names for it. Right? Now. Or, or whatever name that we called it. So here's the thing. Now that we understand the moon travel. We understand that the moon moves a degree moves a degree every two hours, so every two hours the houses shift. So for an example, right? I was born at 244 p.m. during the time that the sun was going through the first house, aka between March and April 20th, aka Aries period of time, where that star constellation was born at before it started traveling. See what I'm saying? So it's that same energy that I got. So for the most part, right, since I was born during that period of time. Yeah, we can say I'm an Aries, but during this period of time, they would just say 
I'm a fifth house person. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Because I was born in the fifth house area of life that day. Because I was born at 2.44 p.m. So for an example, right? If 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. is motherfucking uh, first house time. If 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. is second house time. If 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. is third house time. If 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. is uh, fourth house time. And then if 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. is fifth house time, then I let you know what area I was born in. So that that so fifth house becomes my first house. See what I'm saying? So at fifth house, the star constellation that uh, that came up out of that was Leo. So now you see how I'm a Leo ascendant. Leo is my first house. So my personality, per, personal awareness. Uh, uh, first impression and my personal interest, personal affairs and personal insecurities and all these things is in fifth house energy. But since we didn't got lost so far down the line, we just call it Leo. And here's what Westerners, see, we can't just keep talking about Eastern and Vedic astrologers. Here's where Westerners get lost. They still call the houses the constellation. And that constellation is no longer in that house. But that energy is still there because it's just that house. You see, you see what I'm saying? So for the most part, before all the names and shit was created, I would just be a person, a fifth house person. You see what I'm saying? So for the most part, when they start to characterize me, they're going to be like, oh, he was born in this time of the day. Or she was born in this time of the day. And all the animals and the nature and the environment and the influences and the things that the way that life make you feel during that period of time, they would cater that to your characteristics. Because they're going to be like, okay, as a spirit, this person resonated with that state of being and they manifested a shape and form within the energy that they're going to resonate with. So this person is going to be uh, upbeat. They're going to be outgoing. They're going to be seen. They're going to be, uh, these, this, piece, this person is going to like to be outside. This person is going to like to uh, dance. This person is going to like to mix and mingle with people. Why is that? Because when you think about between 2 p.m. And, and 4 p.m., that's the afternoon. That's when everybody is up and going and running. That's when rush hour is happening, right? So that's when things is being seen. People is moving. Stages is being set. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of things to look at. And, 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 and all the things that people pay attention to, they're out in the world actually do, uh, doing that. So here's all that energy that we manifest down to actually calling what we, the vibrations of the, of the influence this being, spirit, this being spiritual. And now we got the names and shit for it today, and now we got indoctrination of people just talking about it on a surface level, not knowing where it actually comes from. You see what I'm saying? This is the original house system. And here's the thing. Where, wherever planet falls in the houses, that's going to be what's actually going on in that area. So for an example, right? I'm a fifth house person, and I have Saturn, Uranus, and uh, Neptune here. So all the things in my life of being that way is going on in uniqueness and the individuality, dreams and imagination, but restrictions, limits and boundaries. And that's what I see throughout my personal life when I express creativity or express myself as far as setting the stage, fun and enjoyment or having a fixated way of seeing and feeling about the world that I'm in. You see what I'm saying? So that's Leo energy. So this is giving you the concept of understanding the original house system. You know what I'm saying? Now, and, and, and that area of life is going to be filtered through that system. So for an example, right? So since the fifth house became my first house, right? We know what the first house means. The first house means your personality, personal issues, and affairs. So my personality, personal issues, and affairs is wrapped up in fifth house things. Creativity. Uh, expression. Fun and enjoyment. And entertainment. That's what my personality, personal issues, and affairs is wrapped up in. So my second house is technically my, my sixth house. See what I'm saying? So for the most part, what is your second house? Second house is your values, what you have to offer to the world, and where you plant seeds at. So since my, second, since my sixth house in the original house system becomes my second house, then for the most part, I value, and I feel like what I have to offer to the world, we're going to second house. Six house type shit. So I value work. I value health. I va so this is why I'm dealing with health problems shit like that. I value routine. I value patterns. Um, I value um, things that need to be perfected. You know what I'm saying? And when it's not perfected, I work hard on it so it can be perfected in some way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? So th that's what I value. That's where I plant seeds at. See what I'm saying? Now, third house. My third house 
So since the uh since the fifth house becomes my uh first house, and think that's my first house, sixth house is my second house, seventh house is my third house. See what I'm saying? So for the most part, when we when we think about it, my motherfucking surroundings and what I'm familiar with is based upon relationships or how I relate to people, places, and things. So that's what I gotta deal with in this world. I gotta learn how to relate and learn how to create balance when it comes to my surroundings. You see what I'm saying? And what I'm familiar with and things of that nature. Now, if we was just to remix it into my second coming, Libra is in my third house. So it's slightly modified of what I got to deal with today. So now what I just got to deal with is I got to deal with a harmonious surroundings. Or or surroundings where um, motherfuckers is, is probably too passive or I may be too passive at times. Or... Uh, or things may be correlated to there's a lot of love and appreciation of valueness and relatability in there in some way, shape, or form. So that's what I'm experiencing. So a lot of times, by my by my alignment that I'm already it is, I might take that for granted. So since I'm around so much harmonious energies, I might be the negative one. See, so I'm manifesting harmonious imbalance subconsciously, but by my second coming signs, I'm looking at these things and fighting against these things. You see what I'm saying? So this is what I'm manifesting subconsciously. So this is this is like the original house system is letting you know what you're manifesting in your life subconsciously already. And then you have to deal with these things utilizing your second coming, your natal alignment that you have now. You know what I'm saying? So and I'm gonna do a few videos on examples because I know I'm just breaking down the science of it. And a lot of people are not into things enough to wanna teach it. You know what I'm saying? And I and I notice a lot of times I do a lot more teaching than actually just uh giving information. Cause and the way that I give information I like I take it as people going to take it and be able to teach it themselves. Not knowing that everybody is not is not in that bag. A lot of people just want to receive the information and take it to do what they're doing in their life. You know what I'm saying? So for the most part, I'm going to do a, I'm going to put up a few videos on um a few examples so you can fully understand this for people who who's not um people that want to understand things to write things down and do it for themselves. That they, uh they want to take these things and just utilize it for them lives their their own life as part of a spell or a ritual or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they got other things going on. Everybody got their own position. So, I understand that. So, um yeah, but I just wanted to do a quick video on that also. But flight boss bitch goddamn air. Ee -hee.